Well, hey team, Grant Hagen back here for the Reality Capture Recap. It is Friday, May 3rd. Welcome in. Uh, welcome almost to your weekend here. Uh, we have another great lineup here for the Reality Capture Recap for this week. Uh, if I haven't met you yet, my name is Grant. And uh, what we're doing around here is going through these five things over to my side. Uh, which side here? There we go. Uh, of the top stories around this week in Reality Capture. And so if you're new to us here, these are the five things that we go over here. And it was a busy week. There were some really fun things that came out this week. Uh, not really kind of uh, any similarities between these topics, but really just, uh, I think, a really exciting week of some fun topics that we're going to get to. Uh, continuing off of last week, we're shortening down the segments here, so don't worry. Uh, we'll blaze through these really quick here uh, at a minute piece. But let's start with the best thing I saw. This was awesome. One, this came by recommendation of uh, someone who sent this in and said, hey, you got to spotlight this. And man, it was amazing. Uh, what I was really encouraged by uh, is this GPT uh, really custom made uh, from Home Depot here. Let me see if I can get it back here. Uh, Chase, who made this, uh, I'll put the link to this post so you can go and check it out. But it was amazing. It Really what it was kind of doing is he made this custom GPT uh, to really ingest pictures and he called it the Home Depot uh, kind of one here. But what was cool is it was like, hey, how do I build this project if from these pictures in particular? Uh, and what was really cool about it was really just inputting some information of what uh, materials would be needed based on these two pictures and then obviously what tools and all that stuff, but it was just awesome. I was like, this is really the insight into what I think the future is of uh, the built environment, using different tools in kind of a creative way, which we'll get to at the end with the hot take here a little bit, but I just thought this was super cool. Uh, it was really neat to see uh, kind of how he did this and Chase, so shout out, man. Uh, really cool post and cool to see uh, what you did from there, and I just would encourage you to go check out this post, uh, and I'll put the link up in the description as well, so uh, go check that out. Let's move over here into give them a follow. Uh, I've been waiting to spotlight this team uh, for a long time. One, because I just think they're making some amazing products uh, and was trying to think of the best time of really when to bring them in. So if you haven't heard of Imled, I uh, would highly encourage you to go check them out. They have some amazing hardware equipment in the uh, GNSS space for accuracy. Uh, and I think accuracy is always just intimidating. It can be something that you're kind of, uh, you need a simple tool. Obviously, it needs to be accurate in itself, but uh, our team has loved using the Imled products. Uh, they just come out with some amazing stuff uh, that's affordable and really easy to use, mobile friendly, uh, some really great functions with tilt compensation in there too. But I just want to spotlight the Imled team. Uh, go give them a follow, go check out their hardware um, if you haven't yet already. And just some of the posts that they've had really, uh, again, helpful in this kind of camp of like, how do I use this? What does this look like? Uh, what are kind of some of the things that I should consider uh, as a part of this kind of uh, piece to our hardware set uh, from an equipment standpoint? And so I just encourage you to go check them out. Imwood, uh, go give them a follow. I've just really been encouraged by the work that you guys are doing over there uh, and would go encourage you to go check them out. So uh, let's move over here into who's crushing it. Uh, I always love this section here. One, because uh, I, <laughs> I feel like this is almost turned into uh, when DJI is getting into other places and other spots uh, around this idea of hardware, uh, I should not be surprised anymore. Uh, if you haven't seen, DJI is crushing it in this environment of now providing us extra power. And I was thinking about this. I was like, when this came out and got announced, I think maybe a week or so ago, I was like, why would I need this? And I can't tell you how many times I've been out on a project site or uh, using a piece of hardware that runs out of battery or don't have enough batteries or I'm buying a ton of batteries uh, and just this extra battery pack or this kind of uh, hub, I guess. I don't know. What, what are we even calling this here? Uh, the P DJI power. There you go. Uh, but I was just like, this is awesome. Uh, <laughs> anytime I think DJI is coming out with new hardware and product, it obviously comes with intention and a lot of uh, feedback from customers too. And uh, if I was still out using some big scanners and some uh, different pieces of hardware that uh, required a lot of battery charging, I was like, man, I would have totally invested in this. And so I just appreciate uh, for sure crushing it finding other ways to take all of my money, DJI. Thank you very much for doing that. Uh, but yeah, if you haven't seen this, I'll put a link to it and you can go check it out. But uh, if you've ever run out of battery, I uh, would encourage you to go look at something like this uh, to go and see if that's a part of your uh, equipment fleet. So uh, next up here on the horizon, we spotlighted a little bit last week of just some upcoming conferences. I feel like we're in the middle of conference season here too. Uh, and so feel like this would be one that uh, we could add into the on the horizon belt here uh, of Digital Construction Week. This is a really exciting one that I think uh, we were really encouraged about from our team uh, that's over in uh, London. Uh, and just a really great opportunity to engage with folks really in a completely different part of the world. But what was nice about it is uh, it was really well attended, very diverse from the backgrounds of companies, individuals, 
uh, all sorts of things that uh, will actually be there uh, again this year and just thought, man, this is another great one to uh, highlight and spotlight again as we're in kind of the conference circuit here. But you can see a ton of people come there. Uh, and I just think it's a really well attended event, really uh, encouraging from some of the feedback that we've heard. And so it's in about a month. Get your plane tickets uh, if this is something that interests you. Uh, or if you have someone out in that area that's like, hey, uh, this would be a good uh, opportunity and a conference for them to go and uh, join to. So I would encourage you to uh, invite folks to this. And again, we'll be there and hope to see you uh, in June there. So last but not least, this kind of wraps up uh, the back part of this, uh, which is the kind of hot takes. And it kind of goes back to the first thing of the best thing I saw. As the hot take here is really how do we bring in uh, or how do we make AI really more accessible for more folks? I uh, so buzzworthy, so many topics around this space of AI. But uh, what I've been really encouraged by, even seeing some of the stuff from the best thing I saw this week of uh, just simplicity, outputs, being more in love with the problem than the solution. Uh, and really what I love about this is this is a problem I faced uh, back in uh, the construction days here is when we were doing concrete pours uh, for slab decks and things out there that just had so many elements inside of it. Uh, and there's some really cool things on the team that we've built uh, around these uh, concrete AI reports. And what's really exciting about this is there's so much uh, information that I'm not even gonna get done here in 19 seconds, but there's so much stuff that is just a very practical output uh, from AI. And I'll put a link to this. So you can go and dive into this even more. But the idea here is that uh, it's analyzing all these different uh, elements that are in a slab from an aerial map that's produced from a drone. Uh, and then what it's going to do is it's going to spit out a report. And uh, obviously, we're going to go do some uh, analysis and machine learning on top of this to detect where these sleeves are at. And then eventually, this gets to a report uh, and something that you can uh, give your team and really have as the deliverable output. So again, going back to kind of this first thing that I mentioned here earlier of uh, just this idea of the best thing I saw and uh, some of the chat GPT functionality. I'm like, how do we start to go and really make AI more accessible? And it's such a buzzworthy, buzzworthy topic, but uh, we'll put a link to that and go check it out. If you haven't already heard about that, it's something that we came out with a few months ago and it's really started to get some traction from folks uh, that are really interested in uh, leveraging uh, that kind of workflow in that part of the construction process. So anyway, with that being said, have a great weekend. Uh, thank you for tuning in with us again here on the Reality Capture Recap and we will see you next week.